I'm Sal, and I'm Ben. Today we're going to discuss Fantastic Four versus the X-Men from Chris Claremont and John Bogdanov from 1987. I guarantee you there are a thousand copies of this in the soon-to-close Fox Division Studios for the Fantastic Four and X-Men properties all over the place. Because they were just so desperate to make some kind of interconnected universe. No, they can't actually have the copies of that because then they would be able to make something from it. Yeah, that's true. They'd they would... have to write something original and, you know, screw it up. Well, they have to, yeah, they have to adapt it from something in any way that looks like the thing they adapted it from, which is impossible. <laughs> I also would not choose this. <laughs> this is not Which the means they idea. probably will. Well, that's could, fair. This could inspire Certainly. something. Yeah, I mean, it does that's use... That's what they do now, <laughs> right? They use they take a little bit from here, they take a little bit from that's there. It's Jason's best. So, it does inspire yeah. nausea. This is bizarre. Uh, <laughs> because, first of all, who asked for Fantastic Four versus the X-Men? Uh, this also takes place at an interesting time in Marvel during the 80s. I tried desperately to get any kind of insight into what Marvel was like in like the mid to late nineties or eighties rather. What Marvel was thinking. Yeah, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? No, they, they were thinking like... some cool things back then. Like in the mid to late eighties, they were doing these things where you'll notice that this story is a four issue limited series. There's a bunch of four issue limited series that Marvel did mm. during around this time. And for the life of me, I don't know like, where it comes from, nor was it, like, a noble tradition that Marvel was, like, either recapturing or inspiring for future generations. Were they trying to say, like, hey, why don't we make it more like a book? More or less. Marvel was getting into, in, like, the early 80s, the more uh, graphic novel, original, like, self-contained story. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, that said, you got a lot of bang for your buck, 50. Uh, <laughs> you got uh, probably twice as much story and... You know, and you know that there's an ending for it. Mm -hmm. And it's well, usually done by people who work for the studio. Plus, you get the X-Men and the Fantastic Four yeah. in the same book. In the same book. Well, that's the impetus behind the title. Hopefully, you're going to get that. Plus, but, you uh, can buy like a Fantastic Four book and an X-Men book and this. Yeah. yeah, you could get three books that have Fantastic Four or X-Men and both. I don't know. I don't know what the audience is for that. I also don't really remember Claremont writing for the Fantastic Four like ever. I know he did that I'm, though, right? but he did do X Men, and yeah. he was like really big on that. Yeah, yeah. This is on the heels of like the X Men's big event or like story arc that people would later repackage as an event called Mutant Massacre, mm -hmm. uh, which involved, as you can imagine, a massacring of mutants. Um, but well, in that's that, pretty normal. For yeah, me. but in that story, the only thing you need to know about Mutant Massacre is that at the end of it, Kitty Pride is mortally wounded. Okay. And she's kind of like trapped in this phasing state. Right. Because as you sure. know, Shadowcat she... can phase through objects. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so in this case, she was she was mortally wounded while she was phasing. And so now in Fantastic Four versus the X-Men, she is stuck in the phasing stage. But not in a giant bullet. No. Not like the Astonishing X-Men. <laughs> Although she was stuck in that phasing stage too. And thought dead. Are we sure it's Fantastic Four versus the X-Men and not Fantastic Four versus Wolverine? Because Wolverine is the only X-Men on any of these fucking Well, cars. he's the most aggressive X-Man, and he's the only reason why the Fantastic Four would fight the X-Men. Ah, I see. So he's the one who's pushing the fight. He's just always, he's just a huge asshole in the well, story. <laughs> uh, and he looks like a huge asshole on all these covers. Here's Let's the thing. Because... Reed Richards takes offense to the fact that Wolverine is the best at what he does, because Reed Richards <laughs> has never tried what he you does. Just give me a few minutes, and then I'll be the best at what there is. <laughs> Wolverine's like, No! <laughs> Uh, you seem to be the best there is at jumping into a fight and uh, fighting with knives strapped to your hands. I think I could probably master that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know, I'm Reed fucking rich. Exactly. So the story opens in, like, a dream. Sure. Which is like, damn it. But the story is... Uh, Reed Richards is melancholy and holding his, the body of his dead wife. And he, But, like, the reason why I say he's melancholy, even though anyone would be if they were holding the body of their dead wives in the dreamscape, is the fact that, like, he seems resigned to it having been an inevitability. Mm. He's just holding her, and she's dead, and he's like, huh. And his son Franklin, Franklin Richards, Ben's favorite character, is like, <laughs> you killed mommy! And he's like, shut up, son. 
go away, Franklin. This yes. is no place for you. That's right. And he's like, no, I will not leave. Franklin Richards in this story is insufferable. He only says words to drive the plot forward. And he says them in the most obvious, one-dimensional way possible so that you can believe them because they're coming from a child. Right. He's wearing a four and a half on his shirt. Well, that's just a joke that they do. I mean, yes, he is wearing a four and a half because he's not technically a member of the Fantastic Four because they would do, they would well, not. He's also put... not a person. <laughs> yeah, he's only half. I'm assuming he's also four and a half years old. I don't know. I, I don't think it's a double thing because then they wouldn't be able to get more mileage out of the shirt. I think the idea is that it's more like it's the Fantastic Four, and then there's Franklin, and sometimes Franklin goes with them. She Hulk obviously is on can't the team fight at the with moment. them. She Hulk is in the battle. The idea is that after Secret Wars in 1984, I mean, she's, she's wearing the uniform. If she was, because she was a member of the Fantastic Four when the <laughs> thing was Ben Grimm and not didn't have the rocky exterior. Ah. She was like, you need a strong person, and I. And sometimes an Avenger and other times just not in the books. So I'll be a Fantastic Four member. So she was and sometimes is a member of the Fantastic Four. She will be in the book, even though the thing has resumed his role as strongman of the Fantastic Four. But they because... don't want to just tell her to like, get the hell out of here now that we have the thing. We we don't fucking need you. Go, no. Go, go away. They didn't want to. <laughs> well, ben Grimm's just like, Jennifer, Jennifer, I'm back. That's enough. We have a girl. <laughs> <laughs> We have a girl and we have a strong person. You are utterly superb. You're green and redundant. But yeah, here's we the don't thing. need a lawyer. I, uh, fill, I fill both of those roles. Yeah, she's like, I think you might need a lawyer. <laughs> after I'm done with you. <laughs> Guess what? I won't represent you. Yeah. So, uh, but no, Chen shows up later and she's like, I'm going to finish this because I used to be a member of the Fantastic Four and I'm, I'm aware that there's a conflict happening and I'm not just going to be like, well, good luck with that like Spider-Man was in the Avengers story we did. <laughs> Yeah. Where he's like, well, you guys are going into space. I guess I'll just hang out here. They're like, you can come too. And he's like, oh, cool. All right, oh, I guess oh, I will. Okay. And then Wolverine shows up and he's holding the body of Shadow Cat. And he's like, no, you didn't have to kill everybody. You didn't have to kill the X Men. And then, like, hanging from trees are all of the current members of the X Men. And he's like, you, you killed the X Men just as well as you killed the Fantastic Four. And he's like, shut up, Wolverine. <laughs> and he's like, we came to you for help. He's, they're setting up the premise. The idea is that, like, we're in. A dark, dream-esque version of, like, the middle chapter of this whole saga. Where, like, Reed promises to help the X-Men, he fails, and it results in the death of Shadowcat slash everyone. It doesn't... But, but especially Shadowcat. Yes, because she's the, thing, the like, actual central plot device. We don't care about Havoc. We don't care about Storm. Nope. We don't care about... Long the, shots. You know, we see one like, shot of them real quick the, tied to that us. Magneto? That's Magneto. Okay. Oh. Yeah, at, at, for a for a weird period in time, Magneto had reformed and become ah. a good guy and a member of the X Men. Okay. What's amazing is no one buys it except for the X Men. So like every time Magneto shows up, he's like, "Why won't they trust me?" And they're like, "Are you freaking for real? Like <laughs> we don't trust you because there's no goddamn way they're gonna keep you as a good guy." <laughs> Because Look, we don't trust you're because not, we know that this is just a gimmick. You're not yes. by the writers of the story that we're all in. <laughs> I'm just going to say this. You're not as bad, but if Hitler showed up to help... And became an Avenger. Would you accept like, him? Come on. <laughs> okay, that's not the same. That's not the same thing First at all. of all, I'm Jewish. That's grossly offensive. <laughs> Secondly, yeah, it's not well, the same thing. you're trying to kill all the people in the world. What? I said I was sorry. <laughs> and I... Look, I don't wear the helmet anymore. Anyway, I don't so, look as evil as I did. Yeah. So, like, Wolverine goes to kill Mr. Fantastic. Mr. Fantastic moves slightly out of the way, and Wolverine dies. What? <laughs> because a child is having this dream. Oh, okay. And also, it's the most accurate depiction of a dream for me. We're like, oh, okay. It doesn't quite make sense. There's, there is, like, a clear plot, and then it, like, veers a hard left, and nothing makes sense, and the things people do have consequences that would never occur in the real world. Yeah. Like, there's a conflict. The conflict is over immediately, and nothing you did caused the conflict to end, and it ended with drastic consequences. Yeah. So, like, uh, Reed is carrying Sue's body to, like, some kind of temple. Uh, Franklin tries to stop him. He eventually leads himself to a journal that he kept when he was uh, going to college. And then he opens it, and, like, great power shoots out of it. And Franklin's like, no! That's the book that will destroy everything! Don't open it! Reed turns into Doctor Doom. Yeah, it's awesome. Reed, well, uh... Well, the cover does, though. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, Reed, like, rips his Fantastic Four uniform off to reveal he's wearing Doom's armor the entire time. And then he pulls uh, Doom's, like, 
burning mask out of a forge that was caused by the dead body of Sue. And then he puts it on his face and it melts his face. And he's like, now, forever, I am in irrevocably connected to Doctor Doom. And he's like, nah. And then, re- uh, and then, and then Franklin wakes up. Uh, he goes to visit his father, who's like working and smoking a pipe. Smoking a pipe. Because, you know, because <laughs> he's a dad. Franklin's like, oh, my, I gotta, I gotta ask daddy to help me. I'm, I'm having a bad dream, but he's working. He's always working. And you're like, mm. oh. And then it's amazing I because wish he goes, daddy didn't have to work ever again. <laughs> no! Heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wish him into the cornfield. So then uh, for, uh, he's like, obviously Reed's doing something very important. Uh, he says, um, you know, Franklin, it's, it's great that you're here and I love you very much, son, but could you please go away? And he calls Sue on like a video phone and he's like, Sue, the child has appeared in my workroom again. Come Sue. your son, Sue. Yeah, so she... Sue, it's back. <laughs> so she uses an invisible force field and then grabs Franklin from the office and then pulls him out and through the house to where she's doing some work too. She's yeah. like going through boxes and setting up some things. And oh, so thank like, God that she's wearing a bandana around her hair. Otherwise, yeah. I'd never know she was working. Exactly. Yeah, so you could tell that she's doing domestic... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he says that he had a bad dream, and she's like, "Oh, like you had one of your special dreams?" Because he's like special, and he's like lots of powers. So like, he's like, "No, mom, I had one of those dreams that like will tell you what happens in issue three of the book." And she's like, "Oh no!" So she like gives him a hug. She does all the domestic stuff. She's yeah. She's, does she's, she ask about it? Uh, yeah, she does. And he's like, and he, and he immediately tells her about it. He's like, "Yeah, the Fantastic Four were dead, and the X Men were dead, and Dad opened some special book, and you know, ever and he became Doctor Doom." And she's like, "Well, that sounds pretty messed up." Mm-hmm. And uh, so she goes through some some old like boxes, and she finds the book from the dream. Oh no, Reed it's Richards happening. journal. And he's like, "No, that's the book." Ah, yeah. what does it mean? What's the book? We'll find out. Hard cut. Yeah, hard cut to the X Men because we got to set up the X Men too. Ooh. So the X Men are at, uh, I believe they're on uh, Muir Island in Scotland. Uh, yes, that's right. They are. And they're repping themselves by wearing a shirt that says Xavier School. Yeah. Who would do that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so the X Men are, are, are kind of re- recovering from their experience during Mutant Massacre. Uh, Colossus is out of commission. Nightcrawler is out of commission. Shadowcat is in this like weird, like phasic problem where but she can still like can walk, she around walk around and talk around? to people right? no she's intangible so like she's just kind of like frozen in one spot and uh psylocke the resident psychic is able to like put her in like a glass thing and like carry her around if they need to <laughs> how would well, that work why would they need to do Wouldn't that she face because right well because like the, the problem is her ailment has caused her number one to not be able to shift back into physical space but also that the longer she's in this phasic like form, the more intangible she's becoming until mm. eventually she will dissipate into nothing. Okay. That's the problem. Pro- plot of the story. Shadow Cat can't phase back, and eventually she will like become... Incorporeal. Yes, incorporeal. Entirely. Right. Yes. I believe, actually, they go to Muir Island because Dr. Moira McTaggart, a scientist-slash-doctor friend of theirs, uh, was... With one of the best names in comics. Moira McTaggart! <laughs> So disappointing in the movies that she wasn't in any way Scottish. Mm. She used to be. In the comics, she's written phonetically, so she's like, I'll show you how to do it. <laughs> like, so uh, they're like, come on, like, you got anything? She's like, no. I don't, I don't, I don't know how no. to fix it. No. No. <laughs> I, can't, I cannot fix it. So, yeah, you uh, need like a, like a physicist or something. Yeah. This someone is not, like, uh, I didn't learn about this in medical school. Boom. Yeah. Or a psychologist. Maybe it's mental. It's not. So Dazzler and Longshot are in a speedboat. Don't laugh just because someone says Dazzler. <laughs> just the fact that she exists. Ah! And the, like, you know, like this book is from the period when she Dazzler. mattered. What's amazing is it's like only... it's 1987. She's a she's a she was created to capitalize on the disco era. Yeah, like she why are you so wholly here? unnecessary? <laughs> I can imagine Longshot, who is a product of the 80s, given yeah. his mullet. That he would definitely be like, uh, Allison, you can bail. I'm, uh, I'm here now. We have me now. I'm the '80s. We don't. Need I'm you. the decade we're in. You're the decade that just passed. Yeah. And I've got long feathered hair too. Yeah. And his powers are, by the way, like he's just he's lucky. Ah. Oh, it's a it's a long shot. There yeah. You go. Got it. Everything he does is a long shot. Like Domino. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. They're, uh, so they're taking a speedboat to Muir Island to catch up with the X-Men. They come upon a, like, dude 
who okay. must have fallen overboard. He was a fisherman. Yes. Or whatever. So they pull him in, but then it's like, oh no, the fisherman is like, it, it's, it's, he's evil. He's an emissary <laughs> from Doctor Doom. Oh. Oh. I was yeah. gonna say, is it Mystique? No. Thankfully, is it, is it like not an accident that they ran into him? No, it was it was all yes. preordained. All right. No, Doom destroyed a fishing vessel and <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then like Whatever. screwing this guy. So uh, obviously, Sue read the journal. Yeah, and so uh, Sue is standing in the darkness, melodramatically looking out the window, clutching the journal, and Reed is just like, well, I'm done working on science. Time to bang my hot invisible wife. <laughs> So he, like, stretches across the room and covers her eyes, and he's like, guess who? And she's like, get away from me! And he's like, <gasps> what? What the Honey, hell? What have I done to deserve this? Yes. I only neglected you and her son all day long. <laughs> exactly. So then she's like, maybe you might want to read this journal and explain to me what's going on. He's like, what Did you, you write down your feelings again? Don't, don't express those. I don't understand them. It's <laughs> one thing I'm not good at. So... She's like, she's like, maybe you should read your journal and find. It. He's like, oh, hey, my journal from college. What's up with my journal? What do you mean? Yeah, why, why, why would it, why, why would I, what could be interesting in there? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So then, uh, everything's coming to fruition according to Franklin's dream. Franklin's like, no. So, uh, oh my God, I want to be where Jennifer Walters is right now. Oh, because of all the, food. the dessert platter here. Look at that thing. It's. It looks delicious. We cut to New York City. Uh, Jennifer Walter. Well, the Baxter Building's in New York City too, but whatever. The point <laughs> being, uh, so somewhere else in the city, uh, Jen Walters, aka She Hulk, is doing some. She's going over some legal briefings, and her assistant brings her a smorgasbord of uh, delicious desserts and coffee. And uh, while she's enjoying her meal, she smells this horrible, disgusting cigar. So she goes to like tell the dude who's smoking it to, to buzz off, and it's the thing, and he's also there. I let to smoke in a library. And he's in the book too, and he's smoking in the library. Well, it's a fantastic poor book. He's the one who deserves to be here more. But he's smoking in the library because that's what the, the thing does. He smokes too. Sure. Yeah. And uh, so he's re-upping his uh, his pilot certification because it's kind of like it's important to the plot. But the point is like Benjamin Grimm was the pilot. Yeah. And that's like part of who he is. He's he, he flies things. Yeah. So he's like he's we're reestablishing that aspect of his character because like for the most part you never get to see the thing actually like do any of that most of the time he punches the hulk or something well sometimes yeah. he flies the fantastic car. that's true but like it was probably built idiot proof and it's also so, like it's well, just again, transport fly, it's yeah. it's just a it's just a car that flies so um yeah i think that actually walters is working on a case where she's like she's investigating uh magneto and the fact that like he deserves to be kind of like defended because he's recanted his crimes against humanity and, and he's working with the X-Men and stuff. And I think like they're trying to like launch a case against Magneto for like all of his various crimes. So she's trying to build a defense well, for him. Well, like she's like investigating defense? it. Yeah. yeah okay. So she's investigating like the legal What is there precedence. to investigate? Like, you know, like they, she knows that he did all the stuff. He did. It's like, true. <laughs> and well, and the thing says the same thing. He's like, why are you even like bothering? Magneto's a dick. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. It's not that he's a dick. He's guilty. Yeah. Well, he, he did clearly the, broke the law. Yes, but she's times. like, yes, but he deserves a fair trial. He deserves a real sure. defense. Uh, I see. And things like, well, who cares about that? Right. Because I am a simple man who yeah, has who can fly spaceships. Because <laughs> I'm a rock man. Yeah. So anyway, she's like, you know, maybe he does mean what he says. Maybe he is like actually a good guy. And, and do and 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 things like once a crook always a crook and anyway mm. then there's this big explosion across town so then she hulk and the thing go to help it out and so they're like they're running over there and the building's gonna come down so the two of them are like catching girders and trying to like hold the building up long enough so that like people can get yeah, out yeah. and the, like the, the the flames don't you know tra travel to other buildings i have then, to assume if girders falling uh people might already be screwed well that's fair oh, well yeah. some people are gonna die but they can save naturally but they can save as many possible, people as yeah. they can and then magneto shows up as if they spoke of the devil and he's using his magnetic powers to like help them mm -hmm. she looks like see he seems like a pretty decent guy right now and things like god damn it <laughs> like that nobody needs to hear this right now and then human torch shows Couldn't up anybody else have come yeah so why is she looks like shirt coming off oh because like well because she's wearing her uh civi civilian clothes mm -hmm. which are just like which are not made of unstable molecules which do hold up against like extreme right. uh stress but she, or the other thing the other thing is she's yeah. hot and we right. want to see a little bit more of that green skin action but like <laughs> the reality is like if she they always have to put them in purple 
Because it's striking against green. Like and they're complementary the colors. colors. Yeah. I know, but like, come on. I know. <laughs> Listen, a lot of characters in Marvel are green and purple. So, uh, but the, the other thing is, she threw herself into a falling building. Yeah. You know, like, your clothes might well, rip Your clothes are going to come off. I, well, mean, just... I figure she's getting stronger, so she's, like, hulking She's hulking out. out. Maybe her muscles might break a little bit of, the, of her clothes. She isn't... She's not going to be, like, flexing while she's, like, reading briefs. Well, she doesn't change in size either, right? No. Yeah. I mean, like, she when doesn't... she... Well, she does when she's She-Hulk. Oh. Yeah. Jennifer Walters is smaller than She-Hulk. Oh, okay. But yeah. she's still green. Oh, yeah. No, oh. When, well, when Jennifer Walters is Jennifer Walters, she's just a regular person. But not green. No. She's always yeah. green, right? I well, she, she just chooses green. not to hulk, not to unhulk out. Uh, when she hulks okay. out, she's just she retains her intelligence and her like right. and her identity. Okay, okay. It's just that. So when we see her green, that's her. That's what I'm saying. Her final size. Is that's that. true. Yes, she's she already didn't... hulked out. Yes, yes. But and she's I, but... green before this. So that's right. It's not like her size is ripping the clothes. It's like no, no. The exertion, it's like the exertion of and, and... and the extremity of the of of, uh, of the environment. Anyway, so they save the building, and then they all go to the Fantastic Four's building, uh, the Four Freedoms Plaza, because Magneto's like, it wasn't a coincidence that I was near you guys. I'm here to ask Reed Richards for help because my fellow X-Men Shadowcat is fucked. And as it turns out, like, a physician can't solve this problem. <laughs> we need a physicist or something. Right. So, Which, yeah. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So why is he asking for help? Like, because he's a member of the, of the X-Men, X-Men and he can fly over there. The X-Men were Many all... of the X-Men can fly. Well, because most of the X-Men were in Scotland. I think Magneto was not yet. Oh, okay. So Magneto goes right. there. Uh, so Magneto goes to the Fantastic Four. He pleads for their help, yeah. and it's great because like Human Torch is like, oh yeah, totally. No, Reed's got this, yeah. right? And the thing's like, yeah. And we are post marital argument, right? It's actually amazing. He goes, uh, Sue, I I don't want to go and and help the X Men right now, but like you know, someone's gonna die. It's it, I know I know you want me to stay here and have this long boring conversation <laughs> about our relationship, but like. The X Men want me to hang out with them, yeah, and they're really cool. Well, could not you, only that, but like, could I go? I, I could do some good over there. Yeah, but and yeah. all I'm gonna do here is fuck up. <laughs> well, all I'm gonna do here is get yelled at and not get laid. <laughs> at least with the X Men, I can like hang out with the X Men, which is totally rad. You know, well, Wolverine's. On I that won't team. get yelled at. I'll still not get laid, but I won't be yelled at. Right, but no one's gonna be belittling me. Yeah. Look, Sue, so I didn't. I didn't. Look, I didn't put Shadow Cat in danger. I didn't, you know, yeah. send Magneto over here to beg for my help. Exactly. I, I mean, this just happened. This, this just came this up. Just huh. fell in our lap. According it's... to Franklin's dream, you so, did put yeah, the in danger. It's true. Did you do it just to get out of this conversation? Yeah. But what's so, great is... You he... try to stop me like, that. you're kind of a dick. Right. And she goes, there's always a life at stake or an interdimensional problem. It's always going to be that way because we're the Fantastic Four and those are our lives. The X Men show up at my house and like scare my children and beg for us to go to Scotland to save someone from disappearing forever. Like, or the Mole Man is ripping up the city, <laughs> you know, or Doctor Doom, a like monarch slash supervillain, is gonna like <laughs> launch our home into space. Like, there's all this kind of bullshit, and it's all because we're the Fantastic Four. No, Reed, be Mister Fantastic and go fantastically save Shadowcat, please. And he's like, okay. So then he gets on the Fantastic. <laughs> And he takes... I'm already gone. He, he, she turns around. He's... <laughs> <laughs> I left two minutes ago. She hulks like, I'll come too, because fuck it, I was here. Yep. And, I'm not hanging out with Sue and, when she's like this. No. And Magneto. And so they're all hanging out and... Uh, and Sue just stays home? Yeah. With the kids. Oh yeah, she's got to watch the kids. As well she should. She, stay... <laughs> she sits <laughs> home and guards the base and makes dinner. That's right. You know, so anyway, uh, they, uh, so Reed's obviously, like, miserable, and the thing's like, yo, Reed, what's going on, man? You seem pretty pissed. And he's like, oh, like, does it, is that obvious? Am I that transparent? And he's like, yeah. Like, yeah, I can tell when you're sad. We're friends We're for a friends. long time. We're friends like, for a yeah. long time. Come on, man. And he's like, listen, like, I know you're going to have, you're not going to have any problem solving this problem. That's what you do. Like, I fly the ship, I punch things that are heavy, and, you know, and, and, you, and you, you solve the problem. You use that yours to fix things. Right, and you stretch. Like, listen, and that's... Also stretch. <laughs> That's who we are. Like, we're the Fantastic Four. We solve problems. Like, it might not be what we planned on being. It mm-hmm. might not have been, like, what I would have picked to do. Yeah. To be a rock man. Look, I didn't choose to be a rock man. Yeah, but... And that's got its own share of problems. Yes. That, like, it, your, like, marital issues, like, it's kind of even been insulting to me that you, like... You even complain about that? Yeah. I'm and made I, of rock. I can't fuck I can't anyone. Fuck. <laughs> You're married to a hot blonde. All she can do is disappear. <laughs> Some... She can turn it off. Yeah, her power. exactly. Human Torch. He's on fire all the time, except when he isn't. Except when he chooses not. Even to you. Be. Oh, and his just stretch. His ability to be on fire also allows him to fly like Superman. 
Who? So, yeah, who? He's a comic book character. <laughs> But uh, but tell me about your your wife is mad at you, right? Oh, that must be so hard. That sucks. I'm so sorry to hear that. Anyway. I just know that you have like crazy makeup sex afterwards. I know because I live in the room next. We to all you. live in the same house. Yeah. I also know that you bang her from across the room. So you're so stretchy. Well, anyway. you're still doing your science. So you'll you'll fix this in a couple days, and I'm I'll, I'll still be wrong. But don't worry, I'll still be here. You know, to lift something heavy or fly the plane. Then what? Ben Grimm turns around and Rita's already left the cockpit. Yeah. <laughs> Rita's just like, I am having enough. Oh, Jesus well, Christ. Geez. See, I left to escape this, <laughs> Ben. <laughs> anyway, so they all get off the ship and they also have like this cool big machine that Reed built. Like he was also like working on that coincidentally might have been able to solve the problem. So they bring that with them. Right. And uh, and so they're all off the ship, and Reed is just like, "Oh my god!" Like because obviously Sue dropped the bomb about what the fuck this journal means ah. him earlier. We still don't don't know what's going on. Sure, but uh, he's but he's really like his confidence is shaken. The point is that like the plot point is that Shadowcat is going to disappear forever. But the the main antagonist in this is Reed's lack of confidence. Right, and based on it, something that we don't know. Based on a, an earth shattering secret that has right. been revealed. Not to us yet. So he leaves, and then Franklin's astral projected form also leaves the ship because Franklin can also astral project himself when he's asleep. Oh, thank God! Because oh. I thought he was actually there. Yeah, he's like he calls up Sue. So you had one job. <laughs> <laughs> now, by the way, Sue also suffered a miscarriage during this time, so like she's, she's oh, having a rough time. But yes, uh, the point is that uh, that that Franklin can like can be anywhere he wants, but not physically mm-hmm. when he's asleep. So anyway, they go to they go to the X Men. Uh, they start talking, and uh, they go over like all the information. Uh, Moira, Moira gives Reed all of her notes, and he's like, "I don't know if I can do that." Mm-hmm. And he's like, "And I'm worried that if I don't know what I'm doing, but we go ahead anyway, I'll just kill her. Oh, I'll make so it worse. I won't I won't get involved." What? Because, but then she's gonna die anyway, right? And Magneto's like, "Fuck you!" Why did you come then? Right. Well, no, but he came to assess whether he could do and it. He's like, "Nope, nope, I can't. I don't know." So then Magneto tries to like steal the machine. He's like, "We'll just, we'll just work it ourselves." I don't know. So he's like taking the machine. We don't even need you anymore. And then, uh, what do you even do? What do you even do? <laughs> so, uh, so she Hulk breaks his fucking hand. So she Hulk breaks his hand, and uh, and and so first blood has been drawn in the X Men oh, versus Jesus. Fantastic Four. Uh, Human Torch. Okay, okay, but she's not really a fantastic woman. Remember? Technically, no. Yeah, but she is wearing the uniform, so she does represent. Yeah. So then Human Torch decides to jump in, and then Wolverine just punches him in the tummy. And he's like, all right, you're going to help whether you like it or not, because it's snicked. snicked. <laughs> and he's like, you're going to help save Shadowcat, or you're going to die. Oh, my God. What? End of chapter one. So ah! then... <laughs> This is whoa. Okay, can everyone Look, just like pull it back? No, like, X Men versus Fantastic Four. We gotta see them versus each other. Now issue two, and it's kind of cool. Sure. Uh, what's it called? Since Wolverine is gonna like kill Mister Fantastic using all the knives on his hands. Yeah. Human Torch like fuck that. He fires like a bolt of fire, but uh, Storm gets in the way and he severely burn. He gives Storm's arm like third degree burns. Shit. And he's like, oh shit. I knew he could heal. Yeah, yeah, but she can't. So Rogue fights uh, Mr. Uh, the, uh, the Thing. Okay. She kisses him and then like takes his rocky form. Oh. Wait, I want to see that. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Uh, Psylocke knocks out uh, Human Torch using her psychic powers. Does Rogue have to kiss someone to take the power? No, just... but she's covered her. She's covered head to toe. Oh, uh, okay. Right. So it'd be quicker to, to kiss him. Yeah. Also, it's more fun to see. Off. Yeah, well, that too, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> things like I, you don't have to stop. Yeah, right. I haven't had a I kiss mean, in forever. She could just push her face up against any part of him. Yes, but just like no, no, getting that kiss. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna sexually assault him instead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he'll get a complaint from the thing. <laughs> so the X Men and the Fantastic Four are fighting. Uh, Franklin wants to get involved, but he like he he wakes up. I was gonna say, but he's also not there. Yeah, no, so but he's. He gonna do? Well, yeah, that's the thing. Is well, he keeps forgetting, like, because he's a child. So he's like, yeah. he's there, and he's like, oh, and he trips, and it wakes him up, and then mm. he's like, mom, uh, I woke up, and I like, fell from my dream, and he's like, she, and he's explaining to her like the number of times I have done that 
where I accidentally like yeah. step or trip in a dream. And then you wake up like, and you're like, ah! Right when I'm falling asleep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, God yeah. damn, that shit sucks. That doesn't happen to me a lot, but it has happened enough for me to remember and sympathize with you. So uh, she, you know, he, Franklin is explaining to, to Sue what's happening. And Sue's like, is this part of the dream you had before? Is this a recurring dream? Is this happening so, now? Wait, is this like the earlier dream? Or is this the future? She's like, like this sucks. I can't keep track of your fucking abilities, kid. <laughs> no, no, this is the now now. Yeah. So she, uh, but, uh, but you know, so she's like, Jesus. Um, <laughs> but then he goes back to sleep. some warm milk. So, yeah. yeah. So he goes back to sleep. Tap. <laughs> right. Like, will. Dime the tap. <laughs> so that's for <laughs> So I was just going to say, like, wow. Well, you're making a timely reference for this book. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, so Sue melodramatically, like, regrets having read the book in the first place because she knows that Franklin told her not to. Um, but he told her not to read the book. Her clothes fly off. It's actually really cool. She, <laughs> she, uh, it's, it's a cool visual because it's hot, but also she's, like, she's, she's full of rage and her, like, powers, like, she just like forces an a, a an invisible force field away from her, which blasts her clothing her clothing off. <laughs> Sweet. That is also how she gets ready for sex. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> which is really cool. That's cool. <laughs> I, I you know yes sure. I elect for that. So, I would be I would be terrified. If that didn't happen. Yes. Well, she's also distributing or displaying the fact that like eventually she's gonna have a mental breakdown and like but mm-hmm. she doesn't have it in this story. But we are sowing the seeds for like. Sue's transformation in the future. Okay. Because they're like, I don't know what to do with her, let's make her malice. Which is like a dumb version of her personality. We're not going to get into malice. <laughs> the point is that like, she does this cool thing. You explain, you ask why her clothes are off, there, yeah. there you go. Anyway, so uh, back on Muir Island, you know, uh, the X-Men who are fighting the Fantastic Four are doing their thing, but there's still a couple other X-Men, like like Dazzler and, uh, and, uh, and Longshot, mm-hmm. and they go to like, they go to help with the fight, and so the fisherman like gets off the gurney, and then he reveals that he's like a robot. Oh, shit. And he's like, brah. He's all gross and horrible. <laughs> How did you not notice this when you were treating me? Yeah. <laughs> well, he didn't look like a robot, but then like his eyes and his mouth turn robotic. Yeah, it's really cool. Moira jumps in front of Reed Richards and she's like, Wolverine, knock it off. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> not all right. right. And also Moira. Storm reveals that like, you know, her, her horribly marred arm. Yeah. Wolverine's like, oh, shit. Like, I'm sorry. So then, uh, he Everybody, oh man, Reed yeah. has a Reed got sucker punched. Yeah, he did. Well, uh, Wolverine like kicks him in the face. Nice. So everybody chills out for a few minutes, and then uh, as everyone's getting their bearings, then the oh. fisherman robot shows up. Even Rogue ripped her costume hot. Yeah, yeah. but she's also the thing, she's so got, it's like, really she's gross. Got, like rock boobs. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I think All she's right. just no. I think she's just a rock person. No, those are boobs. Those are boobs. Oh, I did not see that. Yeah. But, the the robot shows up and it's like shifting to holographic mode and it's like what's up everybody it's me Doctor Doom uh, the robot projects a holographic image of Doctor Doom okay. so Doctor Doom can make a grand entrance even though he's not physically there <laughs> sure listen I hear Shadow oh, Cat's huge uh, I think he's just higher than oh, them okay. but uh, but he's like. What's going on, guys? Uh, I see you called my inferior counterpart, Reed Richards, here to help you with your problem. He's obviously a huge pussy and can't handle it, but listen, Dr. Doom knows all, sees all, <laughs> does all. I planted this fisherman to be on the boat with your people because I knew Shadowcat was having a problem already. I am here to offer my assistance. That's a weird way to send what? us a message through a robotic fisherman that is it's theatricality. <laughs> Doom is nothing if not a showman. Ah, Here's the see. thing. You help him, I help you. Bingo. Sure. So the X-Men are like, cool, sounds good to me. Reed Richards said no. And he's like, no, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Don't go with Dr. Doom. You cannot accept all from Dr. Doom, it's all he, right? You're going to owe That guy's going. a dick. Yeah. yeah, he's going to owe you a favor. You're going to owe him a favor. And they're like, we're, we're working with Magneto. <laughs> right? I mean, come on. Yeah. They don't say that, but I did. And uh, so anyway, he's like, listen. And then they all start like arguing with him amongst each other. And he's like, well, when you guys have made up your mind, like, uh, I'm in Latveria. Poof. (laughs) So what what happens to the robot? Uh, Magneto like destroys it. Oh, I thought Ah! he just like stood there like, and I'll just wait, I guess. And he literally, uh, it's great. Magneto actually morphs the robot into a gurney for Storm to be transported back to (laughs) sickness. No! I'm alive, I'm sentient, I have thoughts and <laughs> <Yeah>. feelings. <laughs> ah! Hello. <laughs> so then, uh, literally the Fantex Four just get on their boat and leave. Or the plane. Oh. Well, I guess you don't need us. Yeah. So, All right. Wait, so did they take the uh, the machine The machine? Uh, I don't think they did. 
<laughs> well, the no, because Doctor Doom builds another one. It's oh. way better. So okay, so just, yeah, Richards goes home. So they go home. The X Men are like, tr- and the X Men try desperately to help Storm like keep her arm because it's been horribly burned. Wow, like Shit. irreparably burned. And you're like, oh, yikes, that's messed up. So uh, then the Fantastic Four go home, and Reed's like looking at like the schematics for his machine. And he's like, I mean, I don't know why I said like I couldn't do it. I feel like I could do it, but I don't. And he's like, so he's, he's still like wrestling with himself. Then the thing shows up, and then just throws him against a wall and he's like I read your journal you son of a bitch and then he pushes him into the room where Sue was melodramatically reading it herself and all the Fantastic Four were there and they've all heard about the journal they all got the gist of it what, how did the thing get it? Uh, when they all came home Sue gave it to him oh shit yeah so what the hell is this journal? So what's in the journal? is it something like Freed knew about the what was going to happen to them? yeah okay <laughs> oh because I was like, wait, things mad at him? Yeah. It's got to be that. It's got to be that. Yeah, like, literally. Yeah, somehow... me for my rocks. So they're like, you know, he... And it's amazing because Reed is like... Reed has no patience for this shit. Because, you know, they're like... They're like, we know what's going on! They're all being, like, emotional and melodramatic. And he's like, if you have a problem, why don't you just say what the problem is and what you want from me? And so they're like, <laughs> we want the truth! And he's like, I, I assume you've read this book, so you think you know the truth already. Mm. And they're like... They're like, why don't you just read from the book melodramatically and tell us what the truth is? <laughs> so he's reading, like, his past thoughts about how, like, mutants, aliens, subterranean monsters, this world is constantly besieged by problems. <laughs> Rainbows, magnets, how do they work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is a legitimate criticism. <laughs> so he's like, he's like, mutants, inhumans, monsters, aliens, Doctor Dooms, magnetos, it's, it's all fucked. This world is reacting to something, and it needs someone to defend it, and Daredevil isn't going to cut it. <laughs> so... Ow! Yikes. Thanks, man. It, Ow! I, I, I use Daredevil as yeah. okay. but the fact is, no. So, Daredevil barely handled Mysterio. So anyway, uh, so we, we see that, like, basically Reed is... The whole point of the space launch that formed Fantastic Four was that Reed knew about the cosmic rays and he's like, radioactive spiders are making people into superheroes. I guarantee you that cosmic rays will do the exact same thing to us. Wow. And so he voluntarily chooses, he elects to bring his family along. I think he was originally going to like have a different, like a team of like soldiers and stuff. But then because it didn't work out, his his family like stepped up to the plate to occupy those roles. And he's like, my family's decided to come in and step into those roles. It has not deterred my resolve one bit. Like it actually, they're, they're better people, and I know that they will occupy those roles as heroes wow. even better than before. So then they become the Fantastic Four. That's crazy. That you're changes like, the up. entire backstory. It changed the whole Fantastic Four. And you're like, that's fucking awesome. Like Reed is that much of a dick. How cool. <laughs> and also, like the Fantastic Four are unwilling participants, even more so than before. Yeah. Except for Reed. Yeah, well, and yeah. so while the Fantastic Four are like fighting internally, the X Men are fighting internally about whether they should take Doctor Doom's offer or not. Sure. And basically, Wolverine is like, "Our pride slash desire to not owe Doctor Doom something is not worth losing Kitty." Mm-hmm. So they resolve to do it. Why do they think he's actually going to help them though? Because, like, why? Why right. wouldn't it just be part of a plan to like destroy them? Well, because the, the because Doctor Doom doesn't have a problem with the X Men, or has never shown a problem. He's a bad guy. Yeah, but like he's a bad guy to whom? To the person who just like fucked us over? To the world. I mean, in listen, peop, the world treats us mutants like total uh, shit. I'll yeah. say this much: he was nice seems to nice. us. Yeah, exactly. Doom was nice to us. The fucking American government is like yeah. douchey. Maybe we should just take up Doom. I love it. So the it's true. <laughs> <laughs> they they do go with it anyway. Yeah. So, she all goes like, this is way messed up. I'm gonna go. So she leaves. Well, it sounds like you guys have got, like, a family problem. So <laughs> yes. I'm just gonna go do lawyer stuff over here. Yeah. Goodbye. I'm gonna go defend Magneto. Mm-hmm. So the thing leaves. She-Hulk leaves. And everyone's, like, sad. Uh, Human Torch is like, I'm gonna go. And I don't know if I'll ever be back. And then Sue's standing there. And Reed's like, and you, Sue? You started all this. Will you go? Oh shit! And you're like, oh shit! Oh. And the X Men are like, we must for the like, may, well though it may like cost us our souls, 
We must make a deal with Doctor Doom. With Doom. So Doom immediately shows up and he's like, hey, so first up, Storm's arm. That's fucked up. Hey, I got all kinds of cool like magic and science. I've healed it. The end. That's 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 to show you that things are totally on the up and up with me. Okay. This is like magic Neosporin. Yeah, so they go to yeah, that one's free. Yeah. You, yeah. That one, you owe me nothing. That is for the, that is for taking a trip to Liberia. Alright. So they go to Liberia, he cures Storm's arm. That, that, which is why we don't now have Storm with a, with a mum arm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the X the X Men are like tooling around Latveria, being treated like honored guests and dignitaries. So like they're having an awesome time. No and rogue dressed up for it. Yeah, they, yeah, they got dressed up in like rogues like German sweater. She's wearing <laughs> well, those are traditional Latverian clothes that she got at the market. Oh, what the fuck are these? Those are those are uh, guards that protect Castle Doom. <laughs> But not Doom like bots. bird people. They, yeah, they're like Doom bots, but also bird, bird people. It's awesome. They're okay. cool. Caw! <laughs> no, they. Do they, we see them anywhere else, or was that just like we just see them here? The Doom bots are weird in Marvel because like sometimes they're like big weird purple sentinel things, and other times they look like Doctor Doom. Mm-hmm. They're they're and just sometimes they're birdmen. These are the well these these guys guard the castle, so like mm, these are special. They have to be able to fly because. They they see storm. Uh, I'm sorry. They see rogue coming from the market, and they don't. She's an unidentified flying object, so they immediately attack her. Oh, and uh, and they're like, "Whoa, what the hell, Doctor Doom?" And he's like, "Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't go flying at my castle yeah. without calling first. <laughs> like, they're just doing what they're programmed to do. Yeah. So they, the the X Men basically have a cool fight with with these with these uh, these sentries. And uh, Doom's like, sorry. Yeah, and Doom's like, what up? And, and Storm shows up and she's like, hey! And it's cool, because the two of them are like on each other's arm. Oh. Because like, Storm's like kind of used to being treated like royalty anyway, right. so she's like, hey, this is very nice. Yeah, this is, uh, look, he's royalty, I'm royalty. Yeah, like, like we're equals. Yeah, exactly. Like, and he cured my arm. So everybody yeah. chill out. Right. Stop breaking Doctor Doom's stuff. <laughs> And it's great because like Rogue is like they started. She's like got her like clothes are attacked. And ruined. I just bought these clothes and these stupid drones just blew me the hell out of the sky. He's like, maybe you shouldn't have been flying at it randomly without calling it in time. Like, come on. Especially dressed in the commoner's clothes because they have been known to you know attack storm my sa- my castle exactly <laughs> with torches. Yeah, so they bring it to uh, with torches. So they uh, they transport Kitty and they put her in one of the spires of the castle and uh, Franklin sends his astral form to check on Kitty because he's so like wrapped up in this mystery right Wait, he, he cares asleep? so much about yeah, Kitty yeah he's asleep okay I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that she's like totally naked while she's in this like half <laughs> I mean that is pretty awesome <laughs> and a lot of like, nakedness in this book surprisingly yeah. enough he doesn't he's, he's young enough where it doesn't affect him anyway so she's like she deci- uh, Kitty decides She's like, the X-Men are making deals with Doctor Doom to save my life, and they don't even know if it's going to work. I should just let myself die so that they don't have to worry about it anymore. Wow. So then she decides to leave. So she, like, leaves the confinements of her bubble and goes onto, like, a ledge of the castle to watch the sunset one more time before, like, just letting herself go. And uh, while she's planning her suicide, Franklin is like, don't leave! Ah! But she can't hear him because he's astral. And, uh, she's like, do I know you? Yeah, she has, no, she can't hear him because she's she's in a weird state. He's in a weird state. Anyway, so and but, they're not in similar weird. Things. Yes, but her 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 dragon Lockheed uh, does see her, and he's like he screams for the X Men to show up. So they they do, and like Psylocke uses her mental powers to be like, "Kitty, stop trying to kill yourself. We're gonna save you. Like, knock it off." Meanwhile, Spider Man tries to sell you some Captain Crunch cereal. <laughs> <laughs> I like that the Daily Bugle bothered to make a headline, Captain Crunch captured by Sogmaster. <laughs> I like that Captain Crunch exists in the fucking Marvel Universe. <laughs> He's like a real fucking person. Yeah, fruit pies from Hostess also exist in the Marvel Universe. And they're delicious. Yes. <laughs> Psylocke convinces her not to leave, but she's still probably going to do it. And then <laughs> she eventually sees Franklin, and she's like, oh. who's that little boy? Oh, yeah. he must be Franklin Richards of the Fantastic Four. And he's like crying, because he's just so wrapped up emotionally in this story for no reason. <laughs> And I so, don't know who you are. So he's like, don't leave. Like, don't go. Don't die. Because he knows, like, basically that if she dies, like, the Fantastic Four will die with her. Like, the whole thing is tied in with her. Okay. Because the idea is that Reed's confidence is shaken because his family doesn't trust him or believe in him. Mm-hmm. And the one, like, problem... Like, he, he can't solve that problem because that requires, like, 
collaboration and like mutual understanding and respect. Mm-hmm. The problem that is actually occurring is that Kitty's going to die, and he can solve it, but he elects not to because his whole like understanding over himself. Yes. Yeah. And Franklin either subconsciously or like whatever knows that solving the Kitty problem will also like unlock everything else. Okay. So. Anyway, so, but also Franklin, like, really cares about Kitty because, like, she's this beautiful girl who needs help. Yeah. And he's trying to save her. So, anyway, the X-Men are like, wow, like, that was fucked up. I can't believe Kitty almost killed herself. And then Dr. Doom's like, what's going on? Everything cool? And they're like, yeah, everything's cool. And he's like, good. Okay. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, just, don't leave this room. Into the room. Yeah. Clock. Just, away. Yep. So okay, then. Okay, just checking. Yeah. So then uh, uh, Reed has been working late, and he like sees there's a light on in his wife's room or in his room, but which has now become his wife's room because right, he sleeps on, on the couch. couch. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's like, ah, I won't bother her right now. Yeah. And he like throws the book on the ground, and he walks past his son's room, and he sees that like Franklin's having a bad dream because he's because mm. he's he's he's, he's, he's consciously awake and like astrally over in, in Latveria crying hysterically over this poor dead gr- or this this Dying astrally girl, girl. Yeah. son son you're not bothering people in your sleep again are you yeah knock it off stop showing weakness whap <laughs> so but he sees that his son is having a bad dream so he wakes him up mm-hmm. and he's like hey kiddo like are you okay and he's like I'm scared and he goes like oh like so then he holds his son mm-hmm. and then he uh, oh god what's this feeling rushing over me yeah, oh, and, his, and his heart gro- grows three sizes that day <laughs> and uh, and he basically like he uses stretchy powers to like make his hands into like cute circus animals and like entertains his son mm-hmm. and uh, he, he I think he tells a story about an elephant and so he's like showing him the elephant like he's depicting the events of the story using his powers and like he spends like an hour or two just like having a wonderful time with his son is the story like an allegory for what's happening not at all oh. I think the story is called the saggy baggy elephant so no it has nothing to do with what's so happening it's just a distraction yeah from what's happening yeah, it's just a waste. Well, of no, 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 no. Like it's it. important because he's 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 showing that he loves his right. son, and Sue walks by and sees it, oh. and it melts her icy heart. <laughs> that her heart grows three sizes. Yes. Uh, so she basically realizes like the man who wrote that journal is not the same man that I married, and it doesn't matter if like the journal is accurate or if it's forgery. What matters is that like the man who who who. I had this these, these this child this child with and who's who helped, who helped raise this kid with me who became a superhero with me who like does all these amazing things like he's a good man yeah but Ben Grimm doesn't feel that way yeah no he does not uh, well but, yeah it's easy for you to say you got fucking awesome powers yeah. that you can turn off we heard all about it the intercom was on in the plane Ben <laughs> Jesus Christ but it didn't need to be because I could have recorded it from six months ago and it would have been the exact same speech oh I'm so Rocky oh I can't, oh, I can't, I can't fuck with anybody. anybody. Wow, is that all you think about? Jesus Christ, it's like you're obsessed. Why don't you chill out for a minute? Anyway, so... (laughs) The X-Men spar in Latveria, and the Thing gets drunk at his favorite bar. He basically thinks to himself, like, does it matter if Reed did it on purpose or not? Like... If, yes. Like, yes. Who am I now? Yes, it does. But, like, did did it, like, did the means justify, like, did the ends justify the means? Like, Like, is he a better person now because of it? Yes. Well, does he sh- did he show any remorse? Who Reed? Yeah, in no. the book. Yeah, in in the book he was like, you know, God help me, but this has to be done. That kind of thing. Like, it's... no, no, I mean afterward when he was talking to them, when they were all, all like, we don't really get to see like he was in him and he looks like, he looks you. he looks melancholic, but it doesn't he doesn't like cry or scream or anything. But that's that's who he is. He's not a very emotional. Does he person. say I'm sorry? He basically like absolves himself of guilt. I was gonna say, doesn't he like defend himself? Not really. No? No. He's basically like, you've already made up... He He's offended. Like He's like, you've made your value judgment on me based on a book you read, and you didn't ask me. Like You already... Well, you read fair. this thing... You know, really, I'm the victim. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did you, like, have permission to read my journal? <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe you owe me an apology. Right. Maybe we all owe each other an yeah. apology. <laughs> let's, just, let's just all admit that... Everyone here was at fault. No one has to yeah, apologize. But like, listen, but look, especially I turned me. you into a rock monster. Yeah. Like you read my book. Well, let's just, let's just say. Here, you know what? You know what? Here blanket. you go. I've, I got your apology <laughs> written up right now. Here you go. I'm sorry that you all are rich, world famous, and live in one of the most expensive high rises in New York City. <laughs> I am so sorry. You are surrounded by eight foot tall, beautiful Amazonian women. 
that you get to like that because even though you are rock man there is like a rolodex full of women who can and would have sex with you and you get to fly in a cool car on a near constant basis i am so sorry <laughs> Read the uh, the sarcastic meter that you made for me last month just broke. <laughs> it's just off the now it's your turn. Yeah, and now you can apologize for reading my journal, for invading my privacy. <laughs> so and 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 being mean to me. Yeah, yeah. You just now. Let's not forget that when when the thing approached him with his problem, he threw it against the did. wall. And like Silly Putty, he like went... <laughs> like That's he, true. Thing is like having a crisis of faith as he's walking away from his bar. Sure. There's a uh, a truck fire. Oh, and he saves someone. And, and he, he realizes, saves someone, he that, realizes like... that if he wasn't there in the first place, uh, he's, he saves, I think like the truck and like there's, this, there's a car and everything's on fire and everyone's fucked and there's like a mom and her kid. Anyway... And then the mom kisses him and he's like, people will fuck me. Yes. <laughs> Basically, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's exactly what happens. Jesus. Yeah. All right. But she says, but I mean, like, and the reality is, like, if yeah. he wasn't there, no one would have saved him. Yeah, they would have all died. Yeah. So, uh, Human Torch is flying around on fire. Ah, but did Human Torch cause the fire? <laughs> yeah, right? No, he did not. <laughs> he flew by too fast. He ignited something. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> So, uh, Johnny's flying around. He goes to the apartment of his girlfriend, Alicia Masters, who was Ben's girlfriend, who, as it turns out, will actually be a Skrull. Uh, but right now... And, she's uh, according to his girlfriend. Yes. Okay. And according to, to Chris Claremont, it is Alicia Masters, the daughter of the puppet master, a human being, <laughs> who he totally cuckolded from the thing. The point is, he stops to think about it for a second. Yeah. He talks to someone who's not, like, screaming. Well, I think it's the idea that, like, I think I think Alicia's like, if you weren't the Human Torch, we wouldn't be in love with each other. Right, we wouldn't have met. Yeah, and he's that. like, oh, right on, sorry. So then, uh, Sue and Reed reconcile. Uh, Doctor Doom builds a big machine that's gonna fix Shadowcat. Mm -hmm. um, and now that the family is back together, Reed is horribly depressed and angry with himself because... He still doesn't know if he can save Shadowcat or not. Uh huh. And then Wait, it's not your job now. You gave that up. And he, well, he and he and Sue are actually talking about it. And then Johnny and Ben and Franklin all show up, and they're like, "Ta-da!" And he's like, "Oh, like when we're together, we can accomplish anything." Okay. And the story literally could end there, but like it doesn't. There's one more chapter. <laughs> well, they gotta uncover like Doom's like diabolical plot. And then oh, you and about the, the Fantastic Four yeah. and, the, and the X Men. So the Fantastic Four, along with Franklin, all basically get into a big plane and they and they call up She-Hulk and she comes too. And, uh... Okay, you can come back. We've stopped fighting. Right. She's like, oh, thank God. Jesus. I need this gig. <laughs> Have you seen the Avengers right now? They totally suck. There's nothing important that happens with the X-Men on Latveria. Franklin is hanging out with, uh, with, with Shadowcat constantly. Mm. Psylocke finds them and uses her psychic powers to, like, allow them to be able to actually communicate with each other because, okay. like, they can't hear each other or something. Okay. So she's like, there, now you can actually talk to each other. And then Dr. Doom's like, hey, whatever you're doing, it's we, we gotta stop. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start the machine up. We're gonna, we're gonna start. Right. I'm gonna fix you now. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. I'm gonna fix you. Let's go. We're done. Knock it off. Whatever stop you're doing. Stop talking to that kid. Yeah, whatever you're doing. I don't know. Well, stop talking to nobody. <laughs> stop talking to your imaginary friends and let's go. Anyway, the Fantastic Four show up. Magneto's like, fuck you. No. No, and he uses his magnetic powers. No, to like, you gave up and left. Yep. It's and, Doom's turn. Oh, that's right. Uh, Dr. Doom's like, oh, um, so I'm going to turn the machine on. Magneto, you have to go. Because your magnetic powers are going to fuck up the instruments I'm using. Oh. So go away. Just well, go. I could just not use them. Yeah, no, I can't trust you not to use them. You always use them. <laughs> just go, like, go away. What the hell do you mean I always use them? You what? always use them. I'm so not then, using them right now. Aren't you? <laughs> Wait, am I? Oh, shit. <laughs> So then, uh, so Magneto leaves, he tells a sad story about his wife, and then the, the Fantastic Four ship shows up, and then he immediately uses his powers, wow. and Doom's like, what the shit is wrong with you X-Men? I tell you to do one thing, and you don't listen to me. Your friend's gonna die because your fucking friend Magneto. <laughs> That's awesome. So well, then, she's gonna die now, congratulations. Yeah. Don't I ask work... Magneto why she's fucking dead. Yeah. <laughs> 
So the Fantastic Four land. The X Men are like, "What are you doing here? Oh look, it's Johnny Come Lately." And the Fantastic Four are like, "Shut the fuck up! We must fight." So they do. Snick. It's all fight again. Yeah, Wolverine attacks them, and Storm or and and Rogue is like quick to action. I'm kind of glad they fight him again because like calling it a versus book when there was like one barely any fight earlier, and one of the books is like bullshit. I agree. Needed another fight. Yeah. So they fight. It's actually a great moment because Wolverine is like constantly shaking his dick around being like I am the most popular person in this book Ugh. and he faces against uh, the thing and he's like look let's let's do this and the thing just goes bonk <laughs> and just knocks him the fuck out <laughs> you heal but guess what you're still concussed yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> so they fight and while they're all like battling uh, Franklin shows up on the back of Lockheed the dragon <laughs> and he's like hey Shadowcat is dying in the castle behind us. Does anyone care? And they're all like, they all like, no, we're having a dick measuring contest. Yeah. So they all like, it's like a dick measuring contest. I believe believe I'm the best there is at what I do. (laughs) And what I do is have the big stick. So they all show up and Dr. Doom is like, what's going on out there? What the fuck are these people doing? (laughs) Jesus. So he looks and he sees Reed, and Reed is holding his journal, and he's like, oh, "That's, that's awesome. the journal I planted." <laughs> so then they what? all show up, and uh, and and Doom is like, "You guys can watch, but I'm in charge. Mm-hmm. I have a way better machine, and we're gonna save Shadowcat now." If everyone can stop using their magnetic powers for a few seconds, <laughs> like I asked, Christ, let's begin. And uh, and so Reed is like. Listen, I'm here. I'm here to help you. If you want to say you're 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 in charge, that's fine. But I'm here to help. And so they're working, and you know, like of course, the whole point of like the reason why Doctor Doom is scarred in the first place is because Doom wanted to build this thing, and Reed checked his math, and he, his math was wrong. And Doom's like, "Fuck you! My math is always right." He turns it on and explodes and, plays, and breaks his face. So that's like constantly their source of contention. So like, what what that fucking Doom didn't listen to him, and he was right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Doom's like, no, I wasn't wrong. But you were because it blew up in your face. Shut you up! Totally were. <laughs> That's how he is. How can you blame me for this? Here's the I thing. don't understand. <laughs> Not only the situation blew up in your face, it literally blew yeah, up, it blew blew up, up literally in your, your face. face. Figuratively do you, and you're do a you constant need reminder yeah. that you're better than me. Fuck you. Yeah. Your horrible face is a constant reminder. So... Uh, anyway, so they they so Reed's like, you gotta check your math again, Doom, and he's like, I gotta check my math, and then like they're so they're screaming at each other, and Franklin's like, hey, if if you if you want to beat my dad and show how smart you are, then maybe you should just check your math again, and Doom's like, <laughs> and then he backhands Franklin Richards <laughs> yeah, right? the room. so they immediately like go and check their math, and they get to work, and like Reed is like, oh my god, like I this is why I had a problem, like I knew that there was like this flaw in this thing, and you know he's checking it out. And like, so he's, he's, he's feverishly doing, doing science. science. Yeah. And I love this image <laughs> of Doom going, problems, old friend? Oh, whose math is wrong this time? <laughs> so, so like, Reed is like sweating bullets and he keeps thinking about the journal and, um, they're losing Shadowcat and, you know, crap. Like the X-Men wow. are like, you gotta get to work. You gotta get your ass together. And like fucking, Reed, what are you doing? You gotta save me. Reed is like just his confidence is shaken and he's he's just like what if I get it wrong what if I kill Shadowcat like what if like w- w- there's always gonna there's all like the, there's this shred of doubt what if Doom like d- is better than me what if blah 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 oh my god and then Sue is, Lord, that is what I wanted to hear all so along. Sue's watching Doom like just comp- masturbating over <laughs> Reed's anguish and she's like he is really getting off on this like to a to a degree where he like almost knew he would be like this. To Wait a minute. He almost like like he knew to show up to save Shadowcat uh-huh. because he knew his confidence was shaken. I'm just gonna say this: I heard a weird ping in his armor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she immediately jumps to the conclusion that like Doom forged the journal, hmm. okay. or at least the chapters where right. Yeah. Especially because so, like they never actually like discussed the yeah. contents of the book. Yes. So that like they could sync up and see if like. He thinks that what they're talking about is the same thing. Oh, and they offer, they're like, maybe Psylocke will go into your mind and she'll just show you whether the whether the, it was right or not. Uh-huh. And he's like, no, but like, if what if she tricks me into thinking that it's not me, thereby, like, I'll never know. Okay. You know, and and right. I won't be able to believe 
you know, so uh, so she doesn't do it, and he does find his confidence, and he and he and he saves her. Well, what does he? Do? What is the thing that he's trying to? It decide? really, it's literally just incredibly glossed over. He just, he just, he pulls his act together, and it works. I, I can't figure out whether I should push this button or that button. I'm not really sure, and I decide it's this one. Yeah. So then he, he so then the the day is saved. They're all having like dinner. Well, they're having like a buffet dinner where they're like walking around. Okay. And what's great is I love the image of Doctor Doom in polite society. Where, like, he's standing, like, elbow to elbow with Sue, and mm-hmm. she's, like, drinking a drink, and she's like, you know, my son had a weird dream about, the about like, how a journal would destroy the Fantastic Four and the X-Men. He's like, oh, that's convenient. It's, just, it's weird. <laughs> so, have you had the caviar? It's amazing. <laughs> Liberian caviar? Best caviar. <laughs> and, do, uh... Do you even have an ocean here? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, Magneto no. immediately, like, offers his hand. He's like, listen, like... I was wrong about you. You totally pulled it together. Thank you so much. And Reed's like, hey, no problem. Like, maybe I was wrong about you, Magneto. Like, maybe you're mm. not such an asshole. And then, uh, Sue's like, yeah, all right, enough. Doom, you totally forged the journal. And he's like, what? <laughs> so then, Why uh, did you say that? and then she's like, but the reality is, like, he didn't even need to know that you forged the journal to prove that he was a better man than you. Dick. <laughs> The end. You ass. So, so he Doom did? only forged the journal? Doom only forged the part of the journal that was like, it'll bring about the destruction, right? Well, Not... no, it's more, no, he forged the part of the journal that said that, like, Reed created the Fantastic Four on purpose. I thought he admitted to it. No. 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 He never admits to he it. He never admits to it. He just they says. They never even discuss it. No. He just says, they like, just you jumped to conclusion. Yeah, you all have made up your minds about what I did. Yeah. And I know I didn't do anything. Right. So I'm upset that you think that. Exactly. That's what trust and is. You, you won't even talk about it. Yeah. So. Like, you, you know. Go. You know what you wrote in it. We don't even have to discuss right. it. Right. <laughs> Damn it. Because I was wondering why it was written like that, and it's written like that so that they so could the, not know. Yes. They can't sync up their stories mm-hmm. and figure out that Doom <sighs> fucking did Damn, it until the I really the reveal. wanted right? to create them. Like, that's an amazing flaw yeah. in his it, character. It's a great retcon. It also fucking works for yes. the character. It does. I think so. But uh, Look, I knew we were necessary. And the Fantastic Four, on their own, choose to forgive him. Before it's revealed that yeah. it's fake. So you didn't even have to reveal so it. So you fake. didn't. That's the thing. I was like, you didn't even need to do it, but they do so that everyone's conscience is clear. Right. But, like, we don't want him to be that much of a, like. They haven't quite douche. crossed that line it, yet. Not yet. They, we're not in Jonathan Eggman territory yet, <laughs> where he's, like, destroying planets. <laughs> so, I mean, Fantastic Four vs. X Men is mostly just, like, Reed Richards' melodrama, but, like, it's. It's a fun story. Is it fun? I, I think I enjoyed it. Here's, here's it's a fun. classic. I had fun making fun of it. Right. I mean, I, this, was, this it, was a romping good time. Yeah, it's silly. It's weird. And the Fantastic Four, like, don't really fight the X-Men all but m- like more than two times. And even then, like, they're evenly matched. Although they don't do, like, the Contest of Champions thing where it's like, Oh, like, you got one over on me, but I got one over on you. Like... Wolverine never really gets one over on the thing after the bonking. Mm-hmm. Unless you count the time in the 90s when Wolverine accidentally slashes the thing's face, horribly scarring it and resulting in the thing wearing a mask because he thinks that now he's gross looking. <laughs> no! I wasn't gross looking in before. So then he re- even though I always said I was. Thing, you knew you were. You talked about how gross looking you were. Yeah, but now it's even more gross because you can see like this weird like pink pus like Ugh. cheek thing poking through the rocks. I'd just gotten used to the rock face. Wait. And now it's screwed up. Wait, there's cheek under there. Wolverine, keep going. Pull it all off. <laughs> it's just a big, ugly callus. He just bleeds to death. Oh, he's uh, the thing in the Venture Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. always in pain. Yeah. Ugh. But Fantastic Four X-Men, you know what's amazing? Not collected anywhere. Uh, and it, it should be. I mean, you know, why not capitalize on this? It, it's a great don't, timeless don't make Fantastic Four story. Again. I think it's a great idea. I think you should definitely recap. Like, you get a, you need a new cover. No, I love that image. <laughs> <laughs> I do like it. I don't like the speech bubbles. I never really like speech bubbles on comic or on comic covers. You destroyed the FF Richards. Now I'll destroy you. Like, shut up, Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, that's that doesn't happen. And then <laughs> the next, then the, 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 issue two. He says, your mother's been avenged, okay, kid? I killed him. Like, thanks. And Doctor Doom just gleefully laughing. That doesn't happen either. What? What? 
No, these are designed to get you to buy it. Yeah, yeah. how else would I sell this? It doesn't Look. even come close to happening. Oh my god, I never noticed that all the X-Men are also wearing Doctor Doom masks on this cover. Because <laughs> I guess he's controlling them. Yeah. It's metaphorical! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Fantastic Four vs. X-Men, the best Fox movie you'll never see. Nope. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next week with an all-new episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. So long. <laughs>